Let there be light. In this video, we're gonna give a full rundown and a guide on all things bike lights. We're gonna go through the different types available, the ideal use for them, as well as key features to look out for. Now, armed with all of this information, you're gonna be able to know what lights you should be using when and where. To demonstrate the different types of bike lights available, thanks to our mates at Katai, we've got a full range here being supplied because, well, they cover all of the key points you need to consider. So power output, visibility, batteries, as well as, get this, smart tech in bike lights. Now, it's worth remembering too, there are also a heap of other bike lights out there on the market, but they do broadly fall into two categories, lights to see and lights to be seen with. Lights to see with are generally more powerful and are designed to actually illuminate the roads or the trail that you're riding on. Whereas lights to be seen with are the ones which are generally less powerful, less expensive, and are there to actually help other road users see where you are. Now most lights out there do tend to have both a flashing mode as well as a constant mode. And generally, the less powerful light you have, the more you are gonna rely on that flashing mode because other road users, their eyes are attracted more to something flashing than something constant, believe it or not. As well as the added benefit of the fact your batteries are gonna last a little bit longer too. To determine whether or not a light is to see or be seen with is basically determined by the output of lumens that you're getting from that light. Take, for example, this bad boy the Katai Volt 6000. The 6000, that stands for 6000 lumens, which quite frankly is outrageous. It's like sticking a car headlight or a couple of car headlights on your handlebars and riding along. You could call for Batman with this thing on. On an unlit mountain bike trail, this is gonna keep you riding like you're in broad daylight. Now I'm pretty sure that a 6,000 lumen light like this one is gonna be a little bit overkill for most of us riding down unlit roads. Instead, we could probably all get away with something like this, an 800 lumen light, which is considerably smaller thanks to its incorporated battery here. After all, less power equals less battery required to get it going you're probably gonna get longer life out of it too on its maximum setting. Now, even when you compare it here to its older sibling, the Volt 1700, which has over twice the power output, it is still really slimline in its shape and appearance. So when it's on your handlebars, it's not gonna clutter it up. And importantly, you're able to adjust the angle of them so you don't dazzle any other road users. It's important also to remember that in some countries, there are legal requirements for different types of lights and where you can position them as well as the output. So essentially, you're gonna be riding safer with other road users. What about the rest of the lights then? Let's go back to the studio to check them out. Back in the studio then, so we can get in with the nitty gritty of all these different lights. So following on from that logic which we've just spoken about, a 400 lumen light is smaller still than the 800. Now, a 400 lumen light is probably about the minimum I would like to go cycling down an unlit road with. Something to consider is that this one here, so a Volt 800, could actually be used with a lower output of light. So 400 lumens, for instance, or even 200, therefore giving you a longer battery life. And that's certainly worth considering if you were tempted to ride into the wilderness a little bit more and desire that extra bit of visibility. Now, if you're simply looking for a light to be seen with, then something around the 100 to 200 lumen mark is going to be sufficient. And the reason you'd opt for less power is because a lower output light is gonna be more affordable, smaller, and generally a little bit lighter too. Now, this model in particular does take a rather headlight style appearance because it is still gonna give you a bit of visibility lighting the way, as well as making sure that you're seen by other road users. However, there are other front lights out there that have been specifically designed to help you be seen at wider angles. And of course, they fall more into the camp of the to be seen style light. So this Rapid X3 light, it does in fact have a younger brother and sister called the X2 and the X, they just don't put out quite as many lumens. The way they've been designed is they don't only put out light front ways, but also sideways too, helping you be spotted just that little bit more when riding along. 
Now a top tip here I must just let you in on is to maximize your visibility, use more than one light. Why not even mix them up a little bit so have one steady and one flashing. It's gonna help you be seen certainly a lot more by other road users as well as helping you in the unfortunate incident that you run out of battery. Something which, yep, yeah, it's happened to me in the past before. So it's a good little backup to have with you. Of course, some lights, they still do come with replaceable batteries inside of them. Now, all of the lights we've spoken about so far are in fact USB rechargeable units. And that's certainly one of the areas of light technology in the last few years that has really come on. So if you're an infrequent user though, you may still want to go for something like this, the Omni model, which certainly does its purpose, although it's not gonna give you the same output as something with a bigger battery. Rear lights, however, they're slightly different because generally they're to be seen with rather than seeing with. However, more expensive models like the Rapid X3 here, which is the brother of the X3 front that we've already spoken about, they have a bigger output of light, making them ideal for daytime running lights as well as alerting drivers to your presence from further away. Admittedly, in cities and really built up areas, that's not necessarily at the forefront of everybody's mind. But if you're riding on fast, open roads, then that is certainly something I'll be considering. Again though, looking for a nice wide beam pattern is gonna be great to help you be more visible on the road. But I reckon we should take it up to the next level and add some extras onto our basic front and rear lights. Now these little orb lights, they simply pop into your handlebar ends, replacing the standard bar end plugs and giving you an extra light. Now something else big in the world of lights are wearables. So studies and research have shown that light that accentuates the motion of the body's movement are certainly more noticeable than a light in a fixed position. So something on your seat post, for example, but don't go taking off the light on your seat post. Instead, add to it with something like a light on your ankle. Now I mentioned earlier on about USB rechargeable batteries, but there is in fact something which is more recent to the world of lights, and that is smart tech. So for example, these sync lights, they actually communicate via Bluetooth to one another. So when I turn one of them on, the others come on too. And you can actually customize the flash patterns and such like in the app that comes with it too. Meaning that simply, you can't ever forget to turn on one of your lights, something which I do see cyclists do from time to time. Despite having battery in the rear light, they quite often forget to put it on. But with this fail-safe solution, it's not going to happen. And then for the clumsy of us out there, you can even check out how much battery life is remaining, as well as receiving a notification when it gets extra low. So you can never get caught out again. That is a blessing for someone like me and Cy Richardson. So there, in a nutshell, a pretty broad selection of different bike lights, from the most basic user-replaceable units right the way up until something which is gonna illuminate the sky and everything and anything around it. There is something for every different type of cyclist out there. Now, for you to actually decide what model you need, first of all, you need to figure out what the use is gonna be, if you want to just be seen or if you want to see as well. And then also it's worth considering the battery life too, depending on how long you're gonna be riding for. And lastly, fit. Because believe it or not, not all lights will fit on all bikes because with the recent advent of aerodynamic frame tubes and handlebars, not everything's gonna fit. For instance, if you've got an aerodynamic handlebar, it's more than likely you're gonna need a mount or a bracket which can accommodate it such as this. Bear that in mind. You don't wanna buy something that's useless. Now, I do hope that this has been really useful for you. If it has, remember to give it a big thumbs up down there and share it with your friends. And also, don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we have a whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And now, for another great video, how about clicking just down here?